capital. Um, you have liberal institutions like The New York Times paying deference to these institutions uh, when, in fact, they should be challenging them. Now, if you had given a speech for the war at Rockford College, you hardly would have been reprimanded. But just for a moment, let's go back in time. We'll link to it at democracynow.org, this amazing moment, this speech that you gave that you did not actually think was going to be that controversial. After all, no. Rockford College was Jane Addams College. That's all College. I knew about it. I thought they were just pacifist socialists. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when the police were escorting right. you out, did, uh, why don't you just quickly explain what happened and then what the Times did about this? Well, it was I had my mic cut, and you can watch it on YouTube or on Link It to Democracy Now. And I was booed, and people stood up and started singing "God Bless America" and jeering. And, and you were saying, I was talking about the consequences of the war. I spent seven years in the Middle East, months of my life in Iraq. I speak Arabic. This wasn't this wasn't an opinion. This was based on a tremendous amount of, of time and, and energy in an area of the world I knew very well. Um, and then I was finally escorted. They closed all the uh, uh, roads out of the campus, and the security escorted me out before the awarding of diplomas, because they didn't want the students to come in close proximity. The, I had two young men try and climb up on the stage at the end and push me off the podium. And what happened was the trash talk, Fox, and all these people got a hold of the home videos and ran it in these sort of endless loops. So I was lynched in the same way they lynched, you know, figures like my friend Jeremiah Wright. And um, you almost were a minister. Yes, I almost was. I finished, but wasn't ordained. And um, and uh, the Times had to respond. <clears throat> so they responded by giving me a formal written reprimand, and were guild. We were guild which means that the next time I spoke out against the war, the next time I violated that warning, I would be fired, and that's when I left the paper. You were actually quite muted in criticism of the government when you were at the New York Times and you were being interviewed, like by us. Yeah. Um, the Times wouldn't consider it muted. Maybe for Democracy Now! listeners it was muted. But um, uh, the... Uh, yeah, the stance was, and I knew what I was doing. I'd been there 15 years. It was a kind of career suicide. But I felt so strongly that this was a mistake, uh, and there were so few of us that had that kind of experience in, in particular, in the Arab world, that I had a kind of duty to speak out. Oh, we're talking to Chris Hedges. His new book is called Death of the Liberal Class. Um, the incoming head of the House Committee on Homeland Security, New York Congress member uh, Peter King, says he's going to hold hearings on what he calls the radicalization of American Muslims. Uh, what is your response to this? It's racist. It's racist garbage. And uh, I speak to Muslim groups all over the country, and they're terrified. And it's uh, and the stories that I hear anecdotally, of uh, every time they fly, uh, constant intrusions by state security into matters of privacy when these people have done nothing wrong. Uh, they are being demonized, especially by the right wing, for the failings as the, as the state continues to unravel and collapse. They are being picked out as scapegoats. Um, and should we suffer another catastrophic terrorist attack? on American soil, uh, I'm, I'm very, very frightened for what's going to happen to American Muslims who are, are hardly radical. Every time I go to these groups, they fall. Oh, the most radical person in the room is myself. Uh, they fall all over themselves to talk about American democracy and how great it is and how they are so proud to be citizens. It's, it's heartbreaking to watch. Um, I mean, I, I spoke at the Jerusalem Fund, in, in, and in the middle of the talk, uh, you know, I can get away with it because I'm not, I'm not Muslim. Uh, the, the director got up and said, you know, this is his own opinion. We, we totally disassociate. We have nothing to do with his stance. The, the fear, and, and legitimate fear, that has been driven by Neanderthals like this guy and others uh, by, by demonizing American Muslims is, is uh, really deeply frightening. You were being arrested on Thursday in the snow in Washington, D.C., with over 130 others, uh, among them who Dan Ellsberg, right. Pentagon uh, Papers, uh, whistleblower uh, Ray McGovern, who was a briefer for George H.W. Bush for years, worked at the Central Intelligence Agency, many veterans. We played some clips last week. Um, at the same time that this tax bill was passed, um, which will increase taxes on the working poor and decrease, of course, at the highest level, the wealthiest Americans. Link the war with 
uh, spending on the war with what we're spending on people at home and dealing with poverty here? Well, you know, this was, became a very prominent theme that Martin Luther King beat home, especially in the last years of his life during the Vietnam War, that uh, especially because we're going into debt, I mean, we're building a kind of debt peonage system, uh, which is used then as an excuse to go after wage earners, to go after systems like Social Security. I mean, one of the most pernicious things that Obama did in this tax bill was reduce contributions to Social Security, uh, because, of course, that's next on the target, as well as raise the deficit by 900, 700, and 900 billion dollars. And uh, what's terrifying about movements like the Tea Party is that they provide a kind of emotional consistency, and, of course, that undercurrent of racism towards undocumented workers, towards uh, Muslims is very much a part of the language of that, that pernicious right wing, uh, but it embraces all things military, uh, as if somehow the military is not part of government. Um, it's an irrational political policy. Uh, you know, nobody, they want to get government off their backs, but nobody, everybody wants to extend unemployment benefits, Social Security, Medicare, and of course not touch uh, the big, uh, you know, the, the, the force that is draining, the con hollowing the country out from the inside, which is the military industrial complex, 50 percent of all discretionary spending. Um, and so as these deficits, we've now racked up the largest deficits in human history, and as these deficits are ratcheted upwards, uh, and there, there is an inability to question uh, the self-destructive quality of the armament industry, uh, then it's taken out on the backs of the working class, uh, and our working class is already in uh, tremendous financial straits, and, and the middle class. The incoming uh, House Banking Committee chair, Spencer Baca, said in Washington, the view is that the banks are to be regulated. My view is that Washington and the regulators are there to serve the banks. Well, that's pretty much been the policy since Bill Clinton. Your assessment of President Obama? <clears throat> a disaster. A poster child for the bankruptcy of the liberal class. Somebody who, like Clinton, is a self-identified liberal, uh, who speaks in the traditional language of liberalism, but has made war against the core values uh, of liberalism, which is a concern for those people outside the narrow power elite. Uh, and. Uh, the tragedy, if tragedy is the right word, is that Obama, who made this Faustian bargain with corporate interests in order to gain power, uh, has now been crumpled up and thrown away by these interests. They don't need him anymore. He functioned as a brand after the disastrous eight years of George Bush. Uh, and what we are watching is an even more craven attempt on the part of the White House to cater to the forces uh, that uh, are, are literally destroying the United States. Uh, have reconfigured, are reconfiguring this country into a form of, of neo-feudalism. And all of the traditional, the pillars of the liberal establishment that once provided some kind of protection, and more importantly, a kind of safety valve, a mechanism by which legitimate grievances and injustices in this country could be addressed, have shut tight. They no longer work. And so we are getting these terrifying proto-fascist movements that are leaping up around the fringes of American society and have as their anger not only a, a, a rage against government, but a rage against liberals as well. And I would say that rage is not misplaced. Finally, Chris Hedges, you began your speech outside in the snow, outside the gates of the White House, by saying hope from now on will look like this. That's right. All we have left are acts of physical resistance. Of course, I'm deeply nonviolent. Um, and if we don't get out, then we're finished. Uh, to trust in the normal mechanisms of power, in those normal liberal uh, institutions that once, uh, and democracy now, of course, is an exception to this, but, you know, once gave a voice and a place to working men in this country, uh, is to be uh, very naive and essentially acquiesce to our own, our own bondage. Chris Hedges, a Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist, worked for The New York Times for more than two decades. His latest book is Death of the Liberal Class. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, a debate on the question of the record of um, uh, the WikiLeaks founder, Julian Assange, a debate over the charges that he has not been charged with, but faces around sexual assault in Sweden. We'll be joined by two feminists. Stay with us.
Rise Above. Wiki Beats, a song posted by Daniel Alzamora Dickin on our website. Uh, you can go to post music videos at uh, facebook.com/slash democracy now. This is democracy now, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman.